Yo. Uh, you want to see something funny, right? What do you want to fly? Nappy headed, voluptuous black woman, send your resume. I'm in your ass. Lenore Honor, I'm in your ass. William Clay, I'm in your ass. <laughs> Gerald Palmer, I'm in your ass. Anti Spengali, I'm in your ass. In Mukasa, Africa, I'm in your ass. Fuck court. <laughs> Fuck the court. <laughs> Jesus, man. <laughs> oh my god. That's how you start to turn my fucker off, man. <laughs> shit, man. <laughs> that shit. I'm in your ass. Your ass. In your ass. <laughs> Fuck <Spengali>. court. <laughs> Fuck, yeah. Fuck the court. Fuck 12. Bust a whole pint on my feet. Nosy and Landon gonna have me right there with me. Who's that up? Uh, Pee Wee Longway. Nah, that boy was a, a funny dude, though, man. Fucking Dr. Umar. Yeah, like, boy was so fun. Boy was so funny that it it really gets me, yo. The thing that kills me about Dr. Umar is that he's actually smart, and he says, like, a, he says some shit that makes a lot of sense. But it's, like, the shit that's in between that's, like, all right, man, come on. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> but But he's a smart guy. You can tell he's a smart guy. He just says a lot of bullshit, too. Yeah, yo, son, I keep it a buck with you. Like, the less that I listen to him, and the more that I pay attention to like other speakers that are like notable speakers within our history, right? Right. You start to realize, oh, he, he's not really tripping when he says stuff. He's, he's literally repeating a lot of the things of the historians that we like actually appreciate. Right. So, so it's like, damn, it's like I don't even know if Umar really wrong. It's just his approach, and it's like it feel like you know how I feel. People feel like he's scamming. All right, let's do this. All right, three, two, one. Well, fucking just start. Three, two, one. All right. Jeez, What's I'm up, everybody? Yo, what the fuck? About to say it. I'm about to say it. Three, two, one. All right, motherfucker. <laughs> it's like, all geez, all right, relax. God. All right, I'm about to say it right now. Yo, what's up, everybody? This is your boy, Lau, a.k.a. Big Cozy, Too Cozy. I'm with my main guys, you know, the Capos under the big Don Pablo, El Chapo. What's up, guys? Let the people know who you are. Yo, what's going on, everybody? You checking in right now. St. Kitch from St. Kitch TV. Otherwise known as Spence, follow me on Instagram, St. Kitch, S T dot K I T C H. You know what I'm saying? Everything's been good with me. I can't complain too much. How y'all week been, man? This is uh, episode 14, 15, right? Oh, uh, yeah, this is 15. Shit. Um, this is Nigel. What's going on, y'all? Nigel, no shame on Twitter. Um, I'm not doing so bad, you know, sitting here chilling, you know, getting back into the work, work groove, you know what I mean? Doing interviews and shit, things like that, trying to, um, figure out that next phase of life you know what i mean also playing the last of us but i'll let y'all say as to what y'all are doing because i got a few words about that uh he's heated man a little bit motherfucking mad about mad as shit about that i ain't mad at that like i mean hey man there's a lot of a lot a lot of people have been catching some heat this week whether it be on the music side or the gamer side or the political side yeah you know i mean well, like, well, look right so the first last of us was a good game right and I played it, really good game, one of my favorite single player game experiences, right? Right. The second player game the second game is pretty much the same thing. Like it's one of the best best single player experiences I ever had, but people seem to have a problem with the story. Now, I haven't beat the game yet, but I think I'm like a decent bit way through. So I know what the gist of the story is, okay? Right. I think a lot of people have the problem with the character being um a lesbian and I think that a lot of people see it as like they don't necessarily like that. I don't want to say everybody does. I'm sure people have a problem with it for different reasons, but I'm hearing a lot of like, oh, I don't like the agenda being pushed. But here's what I feel, right? This character was like written as a lesbian. You know what I mean? Like originally. It's not like, I understand when people don't like changing characters when like, let's say for like example, like Iceman, he was, he was straight for like 40 years and then suddenly he was gay. I mean, and that can happen, you know what I mean? I understand. Uh, like what? Iceman, the comic book character. He he came out as being gay in like the early 2000s or some shit like that. Oh, really? Yeah, and it was a suddenly. Now, people don't like change and whatever, you know, I understand. But I mean, like, it's a, it's a comic book character. So, 
but people don't like change. So I, I get why people don't like that. You know what I mean? Like it's, they know it to be a certain way and it's been that way for like a very long time. And suddenly it's different. This character is not like that. She was old. She always shows signs of being a lesbian. So it's like, what's the issue? You know what I mean? Like, that's my thing with it. I don't really have like, I don't really have too hard feelings on it because it is what it is. At the end of the day, she's a character, you know, like a fictional character. Like it's not going to hurt me. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, you you realize a lot of people are just like, I don't know why people are so sensitive about subjects like that at the end of the day, but you have a lot of people that are extremely sensitive, to say the least. They walk on, they walk some tightropes and a lot of eggshells not to, to not offend anybody, to say the least, or, well, actually, I'm not going to say to fin- not to offend anybody, but to say that they're offended by something like that. Like, to me, like, I've always said to people, like, whatever someone's sexual orientation is is up to them at the end of the day. exactly it's just like i get like i under like some people look at it like oh when you put that shit in front of kids it's it can it can brainwash kids and all of that right right but at the same time i look at music the same way when you really think about it like you grow up listening to music where it's nothing but a lot of trapping and all of that type of shit I didn't end up doing none of that shit. Like I know, I don't get me wrong. I know people that ended up during the Wayne era. They took drugs because Wayne was taking drugs. Right. But that's a decision. That's decisions and peer pressure. You can't, that's not solely based on the game or solely based on music. So when it comes to like someone's sexual orientation, it should be treated the same way. Like, okay, just cause you're exposed to something doesn't mean, it's going to force another person to be like that, force someone to make that their sexual orientation if that's not who they really are, who if that's not who they identify themselves as. Right. I don't know. People just, I think people just need something to complain about because in all reality, it's a, it's a video game. And even if it was a person in real life, it's like, like exactly. I mean? it's like, like, it doesn't really, if it's not hurting you, then what's the, what's the problem? You know what I mean? Exactly. Like I knew a woman that was married to a woman and she was in a I guess she said a lesbian relationship. Yeah. And she if that's the proper term and like even we we would have conversations and it's just like, yeah, like to each his own. That's a eat everybody's bit that's a that that person's own business. What you do behind closed doors is be what you do behind closed doors at the end of the day. Just listen to what you guys saying. I mean, you guys are just hitting everything right on the head. With the whole situation, I think it's a silly reason to hate on a video game because of the character's sexual orientation. And there's a reason why I believe that the creators, developers, the directors of the game, producers, you know, brought it in that direction. And there was a reason why I don't think they would just do it for the sake of, oh, well, we need to have a lesbian. You know, I think. Uh, and if you look at um, games like Grand Theft Auto, I don't think they put the characters in the, in those games because it's kind of like we need to have a black person as a lead or right. we need to have. It's not like that. I think there's a reason why these developers are going in the direction that they're going. Um, outside of the, the lesbian criticism, I hear it's easily one of the best games of the year. I hear it's between that and like two or three other games and that's it you know like and it, it's crazy because like damn i lost my train of thought i was about damn. to make it i was about to make a point that's when you that's typically when you're about to give a, like your best point honestly is when you right your, your thought what do you say well say it again what what part just, say which just, part just go over what you were saying again take it from the top uh, don't say it all just like hit the highlights so yeah, there's a reason why these developers, you know, they choose the characters that they choose for these storylines oh, of the it. games. All right. So yeah, yeah like. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. It's like, yo, it's like yo, start that from the top. Yeah. So what I all right, cool. Now I just remember what I had to say. You can be quiet now. Nah, but what I was gonna say was, uh, you know, I'm playing the game or whatever, and, and that's not to say like, that's not to say that in certain you know forms of media certain messages don't seem forced and things like that like they for sure can be but in this game it doesn't feel forced like it feels like that's just the way it's supposed to be you know what i mean like it's just it just feels like the characters are supposed to be be that way because that's just the way they're written 
it doesn't feel like they're doing it to really like force a message down everybody's throat like hey like you should you should love this or you should respect this it's like nah like that's just who the characters are and that's just the situations they're in yeah exactly but you know and more than likely someone one of the people involved with making that character probably was that had a important role in the development of that character was probably someone that was gay yeah or someone else from the lgbtq community yeah and they did a great job because the game is man the storytelling in this game is like next level like it's crazy man like i've never had a game made me make me feel like bad for doing something that i did and it's like it's like you do something and it's like damn like once you see the repercussions of that action it's like ooh, like that's it's not gonna shake out well you have people and it's not even just to say with that particular subject right but you have people that because they have a hard time identifying who with who they are themselves, they choose to not like something that identifies with who they really are. Some people who don't know like their their identity have issues when that that type of situation is brought to their face. You know, they can't really deal with it the right way. You're right. That that's just the way it is for some for some people. Yep. Exactly, and that's and that's where they end up having this whole issue about like, yo, we need this game needs to be taken off. No, the game doesn't need to be taken off. You need to go to a therapist or something, man. Yeah. You need to have a con. You need to have, you need to have a long look in the mirror. Yeah. Like why do you, you should be asking yourself, why is this so important to you? If, if, if it's not something that you, if it's, I feel as though when, if it has nothing to do with you trying to fight for people that, that are classified within that community. Right. And you don't, if you're not trying to, increase the 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 betterment for a person that is that identifies with that community why does it bother you to, it to me and that and that's the thing to me and, and i guess to me like i i have i have i have family i have family and i've had friends that i and i have friends that identify with that within that community and there's nothing like to me i look at a person as just a person right i don't care i don't care if if you like what I don't care what you're into at the end of the day, and I don't mean that in a malicious way or uh, uh, insensitive uh, insensitive way, but at the end of the day, I don't, to me, it's none of my business. Whatever you do, whatever you eat doesn't make me shit. Look, here at the Highly Advised Podcast, we respect everybody, everybody in the LGBTQ A plus community. We respect all y'all, definitely, unlike B. Simone. Yeah, who seems to not, far from her. I was about to say, who seems to kind of, you know, be throwing a little shot. Like, I don't want to say she doesn't respect y'all. I don't want to put that on her. But what I will say is that, you know. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. She called, she literally, we all know what LGBT stands for, right? Right. She literally denounced it by calling it lettuce, bacon, and tomato. Yeah, that's a like, joke. And it's not, it's not funny at all. Like, it's not. It's, that's complete. Like, and I and I laugh at a lot of things, but that was like something that I even cringed and said, "Yo, that's completely uncalled for." Right, it's a little out of bounds. You know how us black people we don't like when when white people make blackface jokes or jokes regarding things that impacted us, like Trayvon Martin and shit like that. Like, oh, I'm wearing a hoodie and skittle and eating skittles for Halloween, and that shit is not funny to us. So for B Simone to be like lettuce, bacon, tomato to that community right there that's you know really fucked up for them and i could only imagine that they won't they'll take it in offensive way yeah and the crazy part is she lives in atlanta yeah. like where uh where like atlanta has that that community the lgbtq community is very is very is pretty large for for the most part like i can't give you the numbers i can't give you numbers on them but i know it's a it's a large community there so it's like, hold on. So you, you, you double down on on the offensive statement. I think she tried to walk it back, but it's like, I like you know me. I'm not really for like a lot of times when people try to walk back statements like that, and then like they kind of like you could tell like it doesn't click to them to like yo I should chill or walk it back while I'm saying it. It's yeah. clear to me that that's how they really feel, and they're just saying that's just because and. Well, in her situation, you would think she would be the first one to know, like, yo, maybe I should shut up and not, 
I shouldn't, I, I'm not going to say she doesn't deserve her opinion. She does. She has the right to own her own opinion at the end of the day, but she has to be uh, uh, mindful of any of the repercussions that come from that. But she also, she realized like, Hey, I'm, when you make that opinion, you, she's made a couple, t- she's made a lot of opinions over the past month, right? To say right. the least, where it has not put her in any better favor with people from the plagiarism shit to the nine to five to, I think it was something else she even said, like, and now this is like, yo, you should, you should probably be talking to your team and your team should be telling you to shut up and not say anything right now until we figure out exactly like you, until your publicist is like, yo, give me your phone. We're not doing no more interviews. We need to figure out what's going on. Like we need to, you need to be trained. You need to be more media trained pretty well, much. If I'm not mistaken, this like LGBT um, comment that she made, it was a, it was a prior comment, right? Prior to everything that she's doing now. I just, so I guess it just nah. so happens that she made, is it, was it recently she made this? Yeah. This was like, this, I think this is on the newest episode of horrible decisions. Ooh. Yeah, man. She needs to, I, I, like I the know. thing is, the thing is, I'm not, I'm not mad that she was honest, right? Because a lot of these so-called celebrities, they pretend, and and it sucks. I'm not mad that she's honest, but at the same time, like honest how she really feels. But at the same time, I think it's just if you have you the old saying, if you have nothing nice to say, just don't say it at all. You know what I mean? Right. She doesn't. She shouldn't fake the funk or nothing. Like she supports it, but just don't say anything if you don't support it. Because if you are, now you're entitled to backlash. It's kind of like the since the Tana thing when she was saying, "Oh, black men love women uh, more." Something like, kind of, kind of like you know how we say, "Oh, once you go black, you, you don't go back." She yeah. was referencing that, with, but with black men, and she was catching heat from it. And <clears throat> there's somebody that I know that likes since Tana, and they're were telling me like oh it's not fair that she's getting heat but i'm like yeah it's fair you know once you state your opinion publicly or something people are entitled to give you know their opinion on you so yeah I mean, so i i that's how i feel about the whole beast of thing the way i see it is like um i mean it would be much worse if she made like a just a statement like against them but what i would say is it just shows like a little a little lack of respect that's all i can say like she should have just cl- like cleaned that up a little bit like if she does you know support that movement or, or that community i should say then you know she could just be a little like nicer about it that's all it just wasn't the nicest thing to say at the end of the day no. yeah like oh apparently i think this was like from yeah i think you might be right this might have been from earlier this year okay oh this oh this is a oh this is actually old from a 2017 um 2017 interview so they're just going around like it just so happens that she you know every once in a while she sticks her foot in her mouth and yeah you know she she could probably i mean we all do it don't get me wrong you know what i mean but it's just one of those times where you know she she did it recently and she did it in 2017 it won't be the first time it won't be the last time you know she could have been a little bit more thoughtful as to what she was saying and that's that's pretty much where i stand with it yeah, I mean, but you know, in the midst of all of that, like she she should have been more mindful. But I think I think moving moving forward, she'll have she'll she'll learn. She's gonna learn a lot, and she's probably gonna receive some backlash from it. But I mean, I mean, all in all, though, like she, I put it like this. I feel like she she hit her Swiss beats button to some extent. Like oh, like instead of just being nice about it he's like yo this is what i think yo pretty much did like, you hear about it law what uh swiss beat said this week he got a got a little bit of uh issue with some people in toronto i didn't hear exactly what he said but i seen that drake's right hand man Chubbs was kind of like keep your apologies pussy and i'm like yeah you know how do you keep say that it? same energy he said pussy keep that keep your apologies pussy. So, so much tone put through a text man yeah it's crazy. My, I, like it's How weird. How do you feel about it? Because you're a Busta Rhymes fan. Yeah. Well, first and foremost, the song that Drake and Busta Rhymes were on was on. That song is fucking fire. Like I listened to that shit and I was like, "Yo, this song is like nice." I, I, I hope it's on some type of streaming service. But for right now, I'll be listening to that shit online where it's at. 
I think Drake is holding music like that for down the line. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if it's his own team that's been leaking that type of music. Right. Drake is coming to the point where he's going to have to start putting out. He's going to he's going to actually give us that Dilla song, like that Dilla type of music, because the type of music Drake makes is not the type of artist he, he wanted to be to some extent. What do you like, mean? Cause we, like, cause, cause when he came up, he wanted to do songs with Lil Brother, Jay Dilla. He was on that type of rapping style. What like room for improvement, comeback season. Then I then he tries the experiment of so far gone and that style worked. And then ever since then he's just he's literally repeated that same style of music through almost every album. Every one of his albums are the same to some extent. Like format wise, there's always the one song, the conscious introspective song. It's a song about women. There's a song about the reflection of women, the reflection of his life. And it's kind of like it's just a for it's a format for every pretty much most of his albums. Then you have like the songs you drink and party to or whatever you get turned to or whatever. But it's kind of like the same format. But he wanted to always he always wanted to work with like Dilla and Lil Brother and Ninth Wonder and all in them. Well, I mean, if he has more songs like that, you know, just kind of waiting in the talk, I'm I'm be happy about that because I like that song quite a bit. You already know I like Busta Rhymes. So it's like yeah. for me, that's perfect. You know, I'm more, for, I'm more than down for some more Jay Dilla shit. But I don't know, like it and was at, weird. End of the day, niggas is pussy. Nah, it was, it was <laughs> in, the, weird. in the words, of, in the words of Swiss Beats. Buster Rhymes was kind of chilling. He was like, "Yo, man, I know you' about to like go off and say some shit, but just make sure shit is understood." And he was like, "Yeah, fuck that nigga." Anyway, let me play some music real quick. And it's just like, damn, all right. Let the beat drop right after that. I yeah. think he doubled down on his statement too after that. I think he did. He said it like a couple more times. I think what they said, he said it like nine times or whatever. Something like that. And then he woke up the next morning and was like, yo, because it was on Father's Day. The day after Father's Day, he came back. He walked that statement back and was like, yo, so, um, yeah, I, was, I wasn't in the right space or whatever. Though he was at home, like, I wasn't in the right environment and space and I – I, someone should have just taken my phone. Granted, it's like, bro, you're in, you're in the most comfortable space you can be in your house. We was just, I was just saying it would be some old, like, right. I appreciate her honesty. That nigga Swiss beast. He met every word that he said. Now he's like, oh well, I, you know, mentally I wasn't there. You know, I had a lot of distractions, so it forced me to say something that I couldn't control at that time. And I'm now I'm gonna walk it back. Please, Drake. Please don't end my career like he did other artists. <laughs> Like, but you know, uh, but see that the crazy part is they've made hits together. So here's here's my question to y'all then, right? Is being too drunk ever an excuse to say the wrong thing? Because clearly, you know, he might have had a little bit too much and he might have just said the wrong thing. Even if that's the way he truly feels, you know, alcohol seems like it took, you know, played a part. Do you think that being drunk is an excuse to say the wrong thing or like an excuse to have an apology? No. No, absolutely not. Nah, because that's because uh, more Lyle likely said, for you. Lyle, Lyle said he's gonna fuck me up in my mom's house when he was drunk one night, but I knew he was drunk. <laughs> Hold on, what? I, I knew he was drunk as hell. So like, I just, I just kind of let it go. Do I say it again, Lyle? I, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Say what? You said one night we were chilling in the basement. Yeah. Brandon was there. You were just like, "Yo, man." He's like, "You my friend," but I'll fuck you up right now. And I was just like, all right, you know, like, ha, ha, ha. And, you know, like, sometimes, sometimes nah, people. Nigga, yeah, nah, bro, come on, what's up? Throw them, put your hands up, man. Nah, sometimes people just get a little out of hand, you know? It is what it is. Well, I, look, I know how it is. Like, we've all been there, you know? I, I get it. I must have been trash that night. I must you have were? Been bent. You were. You were You were very fucked up. And, like, you <laughs> know. She was off that dark, huh? You had to be off that dark. That's that Henny talking. Oh, where I, yo, you be chilling the Henny, but yo, you could beat up everybody in this room right now. Say it. Let these niggas know. Let these motherfuckers know. Yo, I beat anybody up in here right now. It's like, wow, you too faded right now. You fade. You really fade man right now. You should. You should chill out. I, I apologize, Nigel. Because right, <laughs> you know. You know yeah, well, I'll never, I would never fight you, bro. No, nah, it, it's just funny. It, it is what it is. It's just like when I hear people like, whether it be in public or you know in the public eye, or, you know behind closed doors, 
they get a little bit too drunk, they say some dumb shit, you know, it is what it is, like, while there is something to be said about just getting that out into the air and actually saying it, at the same point in time, you gotta look at the circumstances around it. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, completely gets them off the hook for calling them pussy nine times, don't get me wrong, but what I will say is that, like, you know, just just take into account the state he was in. Nah, but you gotta realize, though, you... Swiss says, oh, they pussy, but then doubles down by saying, who want to do what? Who want to do something? Hey, like, man. come on. Like, that, that uh, isn't... You're inviting, you're inviting the smoke. You're inviting the cigar session. That's why Chubb said what he said. Like, keep the same energy. Like, don't be apologizing now. And I don't blame him either. I, like, I don't blame him because, like, it was actually said. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's no, there's no speculation or nothing like that or, oh, what... Oh, a hearsay thing is, oh, no, this is live on the Internet. You can always walk it back and look at it and see, like, the pleas that are being cop, man. Like, it's it's nasty, man. It's just, I don't know. Sometimes I hate seeing these artists, like the older acts especially, have to get on here to either apologize or have to make a statement behind whatever was said to them or what they've said themselves because it's like – it's. It's just real distasteful. It's just like Young Jock to some extent, man. Yeah. Like, what happened with him? Nah, so I don't know if you heard, but it's like the song, I think it's called like Get Paid or something like that with Lil Baby and 42 Doug, right? Okay. And literally, 42 starts to the beat off, the song off, with, before they even the beat drops, he says, before I go broke like Jock, right? Okay. And apparently, like, this song is a hit right now. This is a huge song right now. Here and it's is getting played in Atlanta and it's got Lil Baby on it. So Lil Baby's the biggest artist in probably he was he's probably the biggest artist in Atlanta right now, right? Okay. <laughs> Young Jock come gets on <laughs> he gets on Instagram live or whatever and is like pretty much saying, like, you know, before you for you to go broke like Jock means you had to get rich like Jock. So, so he was a little mad. Yeah, he was like, he's like, I don't even know the man. Like, he's like, I don't even know why the guy would even diss me. He's like, now you diss me in the song, and it put me in a, a situation. He's like, and I'm not broke. I got the hottest. I got one. I'm in the number one. They said the number one uh radio station in Atlanta with one of the best radio shows in Atlanta. And he's trying to say all this other stuff, and then he pulls out money that someone told me more likely he just collected. He probably took all his savings out of his account. <laughs> just a flex for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's fanning the money out talking about does this look like I went broke? How how the young boys do it? How the rappers do it, man? Just thumbing oh. through money, man. Like, man, the young jock doesn't have any how to prove anything to us. If he has money, that's cool. Like nobody gives a fuck. It is what it nah, is. Nah, nah, because he got ever since that ever since he got caught up with that Lyft situation, because you remember when he was driving Lyft. Right. Like, I think because of that situation, he just was like, yo, motherfuckers really think I'm broke out here. Like, some, some, someone said there's a promotion, but I don't, I don't think so. I don't so, know. To, to me, that, like, I mean, I, like, I know, I know it's a thing, you know what I mean, where we care about how much money people have and shit. Like, but honestly, that shit doesn't make any difference to me. He's not paying my bills. I don't give a fuck how much money young jock does or does not have at the end of the day you know what i mean i, I know i know how it goes and you know our culture and whatever but that shit's kind of whatever that's like fucking jaw rule doing that commercial like nah. but he apparently he got paid off of that right yeah he got paid off of that but like even with like the young jock like before i even get into the jaw rule situation right yeah like with young jock you know people think he's he got paid off of that right by um because I don't know if you're familiar, but Walmart dropped the 4PF chain. Really? When, uh, yeah. yeah. Like Lil Baby's signature chain, you could buy it for like $25 on Walmart. Really? That's not Yeah. Saying. Yeah. So Lil Baby had to put out a statement talking about like, you had people buying 4PF chains and you're seeing DMs where Lil Baby's like, oh, um, he's not that, that motherfucker not 4PF. Like, because it's people just capping right now saying, yo, I'm wearing the chain, so boom, I'm 4PF. Everybody, you could be you could be 4PF if you wanted to be at this moment until someone really questioned you, until you get pressed. Yeah, I said they did that with the Slaughter Gang chains with 21 Savage. Really? Yeah, they sold sold his chains on Walmart as well. 
God. And uh, Coda Black Sniper Gang. Well, I mean, we talking about rappers going against each other. What about uh, you know that oh. Fab and Jadakiss thing that's about to go down? Whoa, whoa, whoa! I want it. Well, I was gonna say. Oh, we can get into that. I was gonna say we can bring up Ja afterwards. Oh, okay. I know you. I know you had said something about Ja Rule and shit. Well, but... I mean, go ahead and talk about Ja real quick. I mean, is there? Uh, you know, what you gonna say? Well, nah. I was just gonna say like when that when that video came out, bro, the whole internet just stopped and was like, damn. That he's doing this bad right now, like Ja. He ended up Ja. Honestly, Ja was a genius for it. If you like, when you realize it, because it's a show he's producing, right? So his genius of putting out a show that, like, a show like that, but also playing into okay, this is who I am. Like, this is the the public's perception of me of being like a fall falling off rapper. So he does kind of like that. That commercial looked like a falling off rapper type of thing. To be honest with you, it might be top to me. It might be top five of like bad rapper commercials. It's up there, man. You know, like you got that the the ICT College or whatever from Romeo. That's up there too. Uncle Murder, Uncle Murder, check, check, cla- check, cashing. Are we gonna have Memphis Bleak and his uh detergent commercial in there? I I have to rewatch that one. I heard something about that one. I forgot. I f- oh, hold on. It wasn't detergent. I think it was wasn't it like a L'Oreal commercial or something like that. I don't know. I just know. I think like people were in there dancing in the background, if I'm not mistaken, or some shit. Yeah, I think that might have been like a L'Oreal commercial or something like. Or um, I forget what that shit is called. It's. It, I think it's one the shampoo commercial. Start with a P. Well, um, what do y'all think about this uh fucking battle that's about to come on? Is it coming on tonight? Um, I th- think yeah, it's Monday. That battle is on Monday night. So. so it's on tomorrow night. The battle comes on at 8 tomorrow on Instagram and Apple Music, which I just found out from the Alicia, because I didn't catch the Alicia Keys John Legend battle. Like, I didn't catch that battle, but, but I heard that it was actually, you can actually view it through Apple Music. Okay. So, of course, you'll still be stuck with Instagram or whatever. Yeah, because I don't have an iPhone. Yeah, but, you know, you you know, one day you'll learn. You can stream it through Apple Music while still doing other stuff. So, I'm definitely, I'm definitely gonna be watching the battle. I, I got Fab, I got Fab winning that battle. But Jada's no slouch at the end of the day, man. Jada doesn't have the career that Fab had, but he has the staying power to some extent. Not maybe he doesn't even have the same staying power as Fab, just because Fab's been able to be so much in the light for so much longer. But I gotta give it to I gotta give it to Fab. Jada got Jada's no slouch though. Like I know some some people are trying to tell me it's gonna be a Jada blow. Jada gonna get blown out. Me personally, I, I got Fab too. I think he's just like you said. Just I, I would say even mainstream, not mainstream. I think just overall his career, he just has more of those songs that are just hit better with like the general populace. You know what I mean? And I, that's not to say that Jada Kiss doesn't have those songs, but I mean I think just. Fab's career speaks for itself, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's gonna be and that's where it's going that's where it's gonna be the entertainment entertaining part. But there's gonna be some songs that Jada Jada is gonna be hard for Fab to like really answer to. Plus I know because you know they've switched it now where they're doing it together, right? Okay. And so well, like I'm sure they're doing it together for this one. What'd you say, Law? I said like in the same room or something, right? Yeah, I think it was after Ever since the um, the the bounty killer battle, I think it was like bounty bounty killer versus elephant man or something like that. Yeah, because that man. that Nelly Ludacris shit was fucking killer, man. Like I didn't want to continue watching that shit at all. I was like over it for real, for real. Yeah, Nelly Nelly got him up out of there easy, easy money. You think he won that? No, no, no. My bad. I meant Ludacris got him up out of there oh, easy God. money. Yeah, ludicrous. Yeah, uh, nah, that was just that was like that was a one sided fight. But that was there was so much other things going on that could have made the battle better. Like it was a connection issue, I think, that didn't help Nelly in that situation. But we're gonna see what's gonna happen. What you what's what's your opinion on that in terms of the outcomes? Yeah, I was gonna choose Fabulous. I think he has mm-hmm. more hits for sure. Um Brad capability wise, in my opinion, I think they're about they're about equal, you know what I mean? They both can rap. 
really damn good. Well, I mean, go go ahead and say your your piece. No, nah, go ahead. You sure? Go ahead. Nah, you're good. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta edit. So, the the battle of the black man, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh no, my brother, you can go ahead. Oh no, my brother, I think you should be have you. Sh- you're an honorary brother. Of this situation, so sh- you have this. This is your platform. Go ahead and speak. But my brother, we share the platform together. I I think it's only right in my kinship to you to let you go first. But fucking nah, like all I was gonna say was like, I just think Jada Jada's gonna give you like the 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 raspy shit that that Fab's going to have a hard time with. Like, the Hood's going to pick Jada. But the, the but we know at the end of the day, Fab is, Fab is going to win. But Jada's got – Jada got them bars that's more of a talking to you. Talking to you, like, situations. Because Jada's, like, from that cloth. He from that cloth in that era where that's what motherfuckers want to hear, what people want to hear at the end of the day. So, so is it like – Adrian Broner, Pacquiao, how the hood was behind Broner? Nah, nah the, the Broner hood wasn't got, behind Broner. Broner got, <laughs> got, got, got the beats. He he caught the beats by Dre and beats by Pac yeah. and had a nerve to say, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I won. Yeah, everybody that, everybody here know I beat that boy. Man, listen. Try, yeah, I guess he was woke. He was trying to say the game was racist early on. Man, and Pac-Man. He gave the vicious beat down. Yeah, I think um, I don't know. I think Manny. I, I have to look into that because I think Manny. There's a fight, man. They're trying to get Manny to fight somebody next, which I think is is oh, it's over for that. I would love to see him fight Keith Thurman again. Because well, Keith Thurman, person, Keith person, Keith Thurman won that fight. At least we know neither of them are broke. Because I mean, according to the city girls, they wouldn't deserve any pussy. Um, yes. You know? It's just, <laughs> just yes, you're just right it. about that. Before you go broke like Jock or you go broke like like any of these fighters, make sure you no know, City Girls is not playing that. That shit, yo. Did y'all listen to that album, fam? That is the most toxic shit I've ever listened to in my life. Man. It's a lot of it is not. I mean, let me not say a lot of it. Let me say ninety nine point nine percent of it is not good. So if we're being if we're keeping it funky like we like how we like to do on the show a lot of the music is really geared towards women who like doing the same shit that they're doing or in their mind they have this idea they could do the same shit that the city girls can do exactly you on at the end of the day you're gonna figure out if you're gonna cry in your nissan or you're gonna cry cry in the Rolls royce a lot of them cry <laughs> let's be real you know? Yeah, there a lot of them going to cry in that Nissan. Yeah, a lot of them can't even test drive the Rolls Royce. That's another thing, dog. Like, when I hear stuff like this, right, and I hear the music, and I hear how the embodiment, it, 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 it is given through the that fan base, right? Yeah. I be sometimes just thinking, like, okay, cool. So if I meet you and you doing that, and I'm just like, let's just cut all the small talk, how much? How much? Like, what is what is your price? Like, how much? I wonder how many of them will still still be willing to get that same energy. Because it's like, all right, cool. Oh, you want someone that got money and he's spending the bread and all that? Like, I think it was one of the songs they saying like, yo, you need to have money in, in order to get the neck. You gotta uh, you guys you guys drop off the bag. All right, cool. How much? Let, let's not even let's not do all no shopping and all of that shit. Like, how much? How are we gonna make out a cash transaction? She's like a hundred thousand. It's like, come on, yo. Let's be honest. Like, yo, on to be honest with you, there's a lot of stuff that I say where uh, explain to me how you want a you want eleven hundred dollar bag, but you're not giving out eleven hundred dollar tricks. Like, I know, I know women, I, and I was speaking to some women that are like into them, right? And just to get more like the concept, because I feel like you, it's always good to have no people on both both sides of the spectrum right Right. like the girls that's that's fast trying to get the money out of a dude and the girl that's just like oh i'm waiting for my husband right like i go to church every sunday and i wait for my husband that's it and you got girls that are you and i'm not and you got girls on both sides of that right you got girls that are right in between that play both sides of that spectrum so some girls will tell me oh yeah you know i'm not we not smashing these dudes we just getting money out of them 
taking what we can and then be like, oh, nah, I gotta leave. Sam. Oh, nah. Yeah, exactly. And I'm I'm trying to understand the psyche of it. The youngest, these young boys out here apparently doing it just for the look, just so they could be seen with some girls. That's cool. man. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's corny as hell. That's so corny. Like it's it's one of those things where it's like, what is what does it work to you? Like, don't get me wrong, I understand like good looking women attract good looking women, but come on, well, like that shit's corny as hell. Yeah, but you know that's the thing though. But when it comes to women like that. Like, you know how dudes are at the end of the day, bro. Like, dudes are going to – the dudes are going to easily be like, oh, yo, let me get – um, let me just bring some women along, and then I look lit. Because everybody – and nobody doing – like, when we came up, it's more about, all right, like, let's – we trying to meet girls or whatever the case may be, so you're going to talk to a chick. Like, I remember girls trying to get money up out of you in high school, right? But you said to yourself, now, come on, fam, like – that's she was doing that only way you were spending money at that time was because you was really trying to knock it off or whatever right yeah. now it's oh you doing it just so you could have pretty much you paying her so you could be on be seen with her on instagram that's corny man that's corny like they change like the youngest changed the game and the music changed the mentality like don't get me wrong in some cases you're gonna have jones you're gonna have you gonna have to have a bag like that's just the end of the You don't have to have a bag, and it's not necessarily mean you don't have to have the bag to drop on them. But you don't have to have a bag, man. So I just want to say to the listeners, when we are critiquing the city girls, we're critiquing them from like a quality standpoint, right? Because we know that their music is going to be in the clubs, and it just it, it is what it is. That's the type of music they have to make. But if you're really comparing them to other legitimate female rappers they're not good you know they're not good at any stretch of the imagination now if you're trying to compare club record to club record yeah the city girls you know they got it but far as rapping ability alone i mean they're not it's not they're not it so you taking so you taking city girls or are you take so out of that city girl shit right so you taking that city girl shit or are you taking meg's new single type shit I'd rather take Meg Thee Stallion because at least she could actually rap and she could actually make a real rap song if she wanted to. Yeah. Uh, what you think about that, Lau? Not Lau, uh, Nigel. I, I respect that. I mean, me personally, I like Meg Thee Stallion. Like, for whatever reason, like, her, she kind of sounds like gangsta boo to me. Like, I was running listening to her shit the other day and I was like, yo, man, I fuck with Meg Thee Stallion. Like, she's not going to be my favorite rapper, but she's she can rap. That's what I can say. Like, when I hear City Girls, I'm like, all right, that's just going to be a, like, you know, Firefly. And, like, for real, like, if you hear it and the vibe is right, and then you probably be dancing on some chick, whatever, whatever, you know what I mean? And, like, that's what that shit's good for. And, you know, I respect it because we need that type of shit. But, like, Meg the Stallion actually, like, is a skilled rapper. You can tell. Yeah. Like, and that's, a, that's the wild part with Meg. Like, I, I would prefer Meg over the City Girls. But I also know, depending... Like I feel like when when you really out right now, I'm playing Meg. I'm playing Meg if I got a girl with me, right? But um, I'm playing Meg if I got a girl with me. But I also recognize like, all right, you gonna have other chicks that you probably want to have. You want to have. You want to play music for, right? But it's some, there's gonna be certain times where you want to have Meg the Stallion, and there's other times you're gonna want to have the City Girls, bro. Like. Yeah. Meg can actually rap. Meg looks just as good. And she really talking the same shit they're talking about getting trying to finesse a dude at the end of the day. Right. Yeah. You're I mean, I believe Cardi B she even did it too with some earlier shit. Uh, <clears throat> I'm just saying that All our shit, we man. we like to like on here, we're actually when we talk about music, we're talking about the quality of it, right? We're not talking about the gimmick of it really. And right. if we talk about the gimmick of it. I have nothing bad to say about City Girls because their music is strictly for the clubs. It's strictly for shit like what Nigel said, like music festivals, people dancing and having a good time. And but, it's, it's, the, it's the toxic women, too. If But if we're talking about, like, all right, should this be album of the year type shit or should this be motherfucking? <clears throat> is this, do they have one of the best songs 
of, of this generation, they're not they're not going to be talked about. Nah, I mean, I don't think they will be. I mean, I don't think they will be, but they'll probably have somebody. Some some people are gonna actually think like, oh, they're act, they're actually like making good music that's worth being talked about for the rest of the year. <laughs> like, Gosh. no, you'd be surprised that like, when they when it dropped, right? Yeah, I saw like I saw on social media like, oh, this is this is like some shit that people are really rocking with. Like, girls are really rocking with that hype but you know at the same time it's like just like with the the john that you sent with uh jt talking about um little uzi vert right yeah you seeing all of that but then it's like okay you kind of seeing her upset that uzi kind of like since you want to be a hot girl city girl all right i'm gonna treat you like that i'm gonna I'm be a hot boy i'm gonna i'm gonna just be me i'm gonna be summer me yeah. and he did what he did and dipped off and she got upset about it. So it's like, you just, we know this is all for the facade and the empowerment that it gives like the listeners, like it, I, the scam and shit. It's cool. Like whatever they do is cool. The music is cool, but it only, it only can last for so long. That's really it. Yeah. It's a gimmick. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, <clears throat> here I go again with the pro, pro wrestling tropes, but it's like a cage match, right? First time you see a cage match. Oh shit. But if they did a cage match, you know, every three months, you're not going to be like, oh, shit anymore. Yeah, exactly. Like after a while, you just want to you lose you lose the interest of it. But I mean, that's why, like, because of like the, their type of music, I had a real I really started to listen to a lot of the music going on at the moment, like with Meg joint, like the Meg joint, I kind of care for. But it's not really what I want to listen to over that beat. Like, because sometimes I. I guess I'm becoming like my parents or something like that, where I don't want to hear like a new song that's like kind of gimmicky over like a over some like new beat over an old beat, a new a new gimmick over an old beat, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. So I've really been, I honestly, I started playing that Tiana Taylor album, honestly, bro. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to listen to it. I really enjoyed her last project, but I, like, what do you think about this one? Because like, this one is fire. I'm gonna listen to it the next time I work out because, like, I, I really fuck with Tiana Taylor. Taylor. Yeah, that, this joint is fire, bro. I think it's it's a great R&B you know, album. Excuse me, it's a really good project. I listened to it twice, and I was just like, "Damn, man, Tiana Taylor, she she got it going on." And I and I don't even listen to the current era of R&B like that. I'm more of an old school guy, like Keith Sweat and shit, and. She got me listening to this shit a lot, and I'm like, yo, this is solid. I definitely recommend anybody to go listen, to definitely go listen to her album. Yeah, it's top to me. She has, in terms of intros, album intros. To me, she may have a top five album intro, hands down. Um, like of all time, or like this year? Yeah, of all, of all time. Oh, okay. So you really fuck with it? Yeah, like the inch. This the way the album starts off. It. It starts off perfectly to me, and then it's like I'll let you listen to it, but it's a real, it's a real like transparent. It gives a lot of transparency of who she is and like just what you're expecting. Long story short, right? It's just a lot of transparency, and so I, I it's one of my favorite uh, intros because it's very personal to her and her life, right? But the uh, the songs on there are just crazy, and I think. Maybe sometime, maybe at the end of the month or something like that, we could just do like an album review of like different albums and shit like that. Because right. cause even like Black, he dropped something that we still haven't talked about, but we, we'll probably get to it down the line. We got to check out the Tiana Taylor album or we need to give like a, a actual review because I don't want to give like a five minute talk to it because it does no justice to it, to be honest. Yeah, it's a good album. It's a really good album. I think that album, what she could have done right and i'm not saying that it would have been right but she could have really cut the album in half and put the first half out now it waited like six months with the second half and it treated like it's a brand new album yo you're not lying on because it's it's literally every song every song at like i think i would say from what i listened to i would say the 95 percent of the song of the songs on the album i all have replay value so I would have to like literally go back through only songs that probably don't have replay value are the songs that I'm skipping through because I want to listen to go back and listen to another song that I've already heard on the album, to be honest. So 
I do agree that we definitely got to talk about some album reviews and things like that. I still want to talk about Silk Money's album. I know you listened to like a part of that album or that part of that song last night. It's like totally different. We got to make a list of like the top five or like top our two. favorite. Yeah, well, I mean, just our favorite intros because I know I got some songs on there that I could put on there right now. Yeah, I think that that would be a that'd be a good conversation. We'll have to set something up for that one, man. Like, well, let's not get a listeners too much like to come right when it's all said and done. But we definitely gonna have to put some up. Yeah, I just got an alert on my phone, right? Okay. Um, and granted, by the time y'all hear this, by the time listeners hear this, it'll already be old news, probably. But it'll be f- still fresh news to some extent. Cam Newton just got signed to a one-year deal with the Patriots. How y'all feeling about that? I mean, me personally, like, to me, it's not I, – I think it's a great move for Cam Newton. I'm not going to lie because, like, I feel like that's just going to be a good move for him. I feel like the team already has a few pieces. I don't think they're in, like – I don't think they're going to, ha- like, have a good playoff run, if I'm be honest. But, I mean, like, with Tom Brady, they did fine. Like, now they got a capable quarterback who's been to the Super Bowl before. I think they're going to be, you know, well off for it. I, me, personally, I think that's a great fit for Cam Newton. I think it would have been a good fit for Cap as well. I think oh, that, that would be crazy. Well, I don't know about Kaepernick, and I'll get into that in a moment, right? Okay. I think it's a good fit for Cam Newton because he's been playing regularly, but I don't know if – it'll be good over because Cam Newton is injury prone, right? Like every year he's, he's like Carson Wentz. He's getting fucking hurt or he still has a nagging injury. Fair enough. A hundred percent recovered from. So if Cam Newton, it's not, if let's say that he's close to a hundred percent, you know, he could finish out the season. They have a chance where they can make the playoffs. You know what I mean? Cause with Bill Belichick's coaching and Cam Newton is when he was on top, he, Remember, he was NFL MVP. You know what I mean. So, yeah, it, it was no slouch. But you saw his training video, right? Yeah, I did. It looks yeah. like he's he's getting ready. Yeah. But um, I already know why you're about to say cap. Like, and I had to think about it after I said it. But go ahead and say what you're gonna say. I, I'm, I have a feeling I'm gonna agree with you. I I know what you're gonna say. I probably I don't think I am though. Here's the thing about Kaepernick. Why I I wouldn't say he's a great fit for the Patriots. Actually, I don't think he's a great fit for a starting job right now because, one, he hasn't played for a few years. So for somebody to come out that hasn't played to just getting a starting job in the NFL, it's just right there it'll be like, okay, due to everything that's going on, we're trying to put Kaepernick in there just to show everybody, yeah, we care about him, we apologize. It's more like a PR move. Really, realistically, Ka- Kaepernick should be a backup quarterback because before he left the league, he wasn't doing well at all. So I feel like if you want to base it just off of skills alone, should Kaepernick be in the league? Like if you want to talk about that, yeah, you know, why not? But should he be a starting quarterback right now? No, I think he should be a backup quarterback unless, unless he's, you know, competing for somebody for somebody's job. Like, it's it's very hard to go for you to be like oh he deserves to be a starter if you just talk about skills alone. I mean, but you also have like, and granted, I can't name them off off the top of my head, but you got you have other fighter not fighters but football players that that are starting quarterbacks that we know more than likely cap is skill wise better than them because you have like there's at the end of the day like it's not thirty two teams that are all prospering with like these quarterbacks with these amazing QBRs like you have some bad quarterbacks also and I think that's where I think now I'm not going to say he he deserves to be a starter on to be honest I don't think he's he I think he should be done playing football honestly like I think for him right now he can I, I don't know if he could really start at this at the Patriots but I I can say I think I, I do believe he could start on like a team where they they're still looking for a quarterback or the quarterbacks they have aren't that great like yeah, what they're, they're, they're. but like which team because like practically almost every team in NFL got a solid quarterback well I mean know, I, I can't name them off the ha- off the top of my head but there's some there's there's like if I if I was to look it up I probably could give you I probably could give you something but there's um you know I agree with Spence to a certain degree and I agree with you to a certain degree like I don't think I think he could probably start on a team that has a not so great quarterback right now because he will probably be 
at the same level or better than them. But at the same point in time, he probably would be a better fit. Like, like for example, Teddy Bridgewater. Teddy Bridgewater was out for a decent bit of time. Said, all right, we're going to put you behind Drew Brees, get your legs back under you. You know, he actually, you know, could be a starter for real, for real. Now he's on the um the Panthers. So it's like, it just makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, I think, I think Cam Newton would be like perfect for that. You mean uh, Cap? Kaepernick. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. Yeah, but that, that's what I was saying. Like, for him to be a, a, a backup, that would be good. You know, so to give him the opportunity to compete for a starting job, but just to have him as a starter right out the bat, I don't think it's that's not viable. You know what I mean? Because one, he hasn't played X amount of time, and then two, his last few years before he stopped playing, he wasn't doing so well. So I'm not saying that he doesn't deserve a shot in the NFL. I think he does deserve a shot because a lot of people don't. A lot of people also don't give him the credit that he was also a Super Bowl playing quarterback. He didn't exactly. win. Yep. I just don't think he should get a starting job first. I think he should play back up and have him compete just to see how he does. Because when, when you put somebody as a starter you, and that offense is running through you, that's kind of like a big deal, right? So And we're and we're coming into the times in the league. And I don't want to get too deep into it because I know we got to move on and talk about this shit. But – we're coming to to a time in the league where the quarterback is a very important position. It always has been, but it's a lot more important now. We're seeing teams where without a decent quarterback, they're going absolutely nowhere. Like for example, but that's always been like that that to some extent that's always played a quarterback has always played that type of factor in most teams though. Mm, I w- I mean, here's an example. Name, name a name a name a Super Bowl winning team without a good quarterback. The Ravens when they when they won with Trent Delfer, whatever his fucking last name is, that team was that definitely wasn't a quarterback winning team. Matter of fact, I'll give you one one a little more recent when the Denver Broncos when they beat Cam Newton and them in the playoffs. That wasn't because of Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning actually had the worst performance of a quarterback in the Super Bowl that year. Actually, Peyton Manning didn't do great that didn't do great those uh, playoffs leading up to it. The team carried him, so it was just kind of like there is instances where. But that's still, but at the same time, that's still a core. Like, I, I, I get what you're saying when it comes to like Peyton Manning in that, si- in that sense. But in the same regard, it's, I guess to me, at the same, in the same regard as Peyton Manning, the same way if, let's say, Tom Brady w- was to be in that situation with the Bucks, right? Okay. Or as the Bucks he's, he's with, right? So if he was in the same regard where, let's say, he's not playing that great, you're still going to say, well, that's Tom Brady. Like, he, even if even if he physically can't do it mentally, he has the he has the mental capacity and experience to say, okay, I'm not playing that good, but we make the adjustments, and that and a lot of times those adjustments are needed are are made because you have a good team with you, but like, like okay, like Trent Dilfer, I'll give you that one, but like, it's it's far and few between where you're gonna have like a a bum ass quarterback that just happens to be a bum-ass quarterback and he he's a bum-ass quarterback that can carry you to the Super Bowl. Well, here, here's what I will say, right? Because Lyle, Lyle is kind of speaking facts on that. Like, at the end of the day, if you – usually teams that don't have a great quarterback, they're just, like, complementary to that team, their defense is, like, the defense of the league. Like, they're putting right. in work. And that's the thing. Like, Trent Delford, that defense and, like, that, that was doing – it was doing work for him. Can't remember who they beat though, but Peyton Manning though, that the, say it again. They beat the Giants. Thank you. And um, like I for me, like I like when I think about it, like Cam Newton got beat by that defense. He wasn't doing shit in that game. Like they were on his ass for the entire game. So it's just one of those things where it's like when I when I think about Cam or when I think about Colin, I'm pretty sure like he could. Honestly, and me personally, my hot take is that, like, I think eventually, like, teams are going to, like, eventually going to have to work in, like, having, like, a a pretty decent backup because just the way it's going, like, the way I see it is if they keep on adding more games, they're going to need, like, more players or whatever. Just the same way that baseball players, like, they have, like, they'll have, like, an anchor pitcher. Like, they they might need a quarterback who's just ready to step up when, you know, the time comes. If they keep right. on putting in more games, like I think they're talking about adding two more games to the season, plus preseason, 
You know what I mean? Plus playoffs. Yeah, that's so money. That's just all for money, though. Yeah, of course it is. But I mean, that's like, just imagine having to play twenty plus games, and I mean, they probably won't play in the preseason. But I mean, just imagine playing twenty plus games, and you gotta you gotta have your arm ready to go. You're not gonna want to play your quarterback all the, all the time, especially if you're like. Well, it'd be like baseball, exactly like it. Yeah. yeah. Where it's yeah. like, okay, at the closer to the closer you get to the end of the season. All right, let's take them out like for a game, or even like basketball, where you know once once it's been solidified that you know what where a team stands when it comes to to making to making the playoffs. It's like okay, let's yeah, let's let's hone back on starting LeBron right now, or yeah, let's give LeBron less minutes as the season dwindles down before the playoffs, and same with Seth Curry and everything like that. So. I don't know. It's it's definitely a thing that like that we have to be mind that people have to be mindful of. I guess it it all depends on the sport because in some cases certain sports you don't really even have that you don't have that chance when you really think about it. Yeah. Like where you have like fighters, for instance, where they have to fight multiple times, depending on mul- the amount of fights they want to fight per year or whatever. And like you'll see someone like like the Dustin Poirier fight last night, right? Right. Yeah. Where. That that was a really good fight, and there was no moment where like you could really nobody had time like him nor Dan Hooker really had time to just be like, okay, let me just take a break, you know. Then I don't. Well, when I was watching the fight, I like I the way I feel about it is if it was anybody with lesser of a chin than Dan Hooker, like Dan Hooker, his chin did some work for him because like. Just like the same as the uh, Tony Justin Gaethje fight, like they were throwing some shots that would put other people like down for real, for real. Facts. I motherfucker was throwing some combinations. Yeah. Because they were, and because Dan Hooker, he was, he was. I, I, I peeped what he was doing. He was throwing. He was trying to throw shots to the body and to the head. Like he was working up and down throughout that whole fight. But when he would throw them combinations, next thing you know, you would see uh, Poirier just. Come out, come out the gate, got, 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 hit the nigga with some shit. Then next thing you know, they're just going back and forth, and it's it was one hell of a fight. It was one hell of a fight, and you realize like, oh, someone like Dan. I think even though Dan Hooker lost that fight, you were still able to tell who Dan Hooker was. Yep. Like you left that fight knowing I want to see Dan Hooker fight again. Yep, for sure. It was a great fight. Um. A lot of people are saying it might be fight of the year. It's not. It's, it's, it's not. Good. Nah, it wasn't Usman's fight this year. No, nah, that was late, late last year. I think fight of the year is still um, Joanna Zangwele. Like that fight is a classic. I still haven't watched that fight yet. Yeah, it was a good fight. It was a great fight. I scored the first two rounds for Dan Hooker. I was actually going to score the third for Dan Hooker, but like Poirier stole it. Then Poirier took over in the fourth and fifth rounds. And that was a good fight, man. And I'm going to piggyback on what Spence is saying. If you didn't know who Dan Hooker was and if you watched the fight last night, I guarantee you know who he is now because they definitely gave the fans a show last night. You know who really impressed me last night? Fucking Mike uh, Perry. Yeah, Mike Perry going in by himself (laughs) with 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 his his girlfriend girlfriend and going beating Mickey Gall. You know the thing about it is, though? Like, I think he's just a better fighter than Mickey Gall is, period. Yeah. you know, like, I don't feel like he really needed anything because he's just better than him. What did you say, La? I said that's what that was. He was just a better fighter. You guys called that last night, too, because I was like, man, all he's going to do is head hunting. But he controlled Mickey Go on the ground, too, quite a yep. bit. But, yeah. And he he was just a much better fighter. And in a post-fight conference, he was like, I don't know if it was just luck or it was just the right fighter. But he knew that he can't keep going on without a corner. So I think this might just be like a one and done thing with just having his girlfriend in the corner. Yeah. I mean, his girlfriend looked lost the whole fight, honestly. <laughs> like she just like, cause I, like I was telling Nigel when, when we were watching it, I was like, when we watched the Poirier fight, I said, Mike Perry would have been in trouble. Had he, had he was, if he was having a fight that Dustin Poirier was having, where it was a dog fight, he would have been so much trouble because granted he still had a cut man, but it he would have just got he would have just got exposed and just had a long night. Like there were moments where I thought even Mickey Gall was gonna Mickey Gall showed like 
some some chances, and then it was just like nah. It was just like that complete dominance taken in. Um, real quick, then, what do you think is next for Mike Perry, and what do you think is next for Dustin Poirier? Mike Perry says he wants to go up to middleweight to fight Darren Till, but I think that's not going to happen. Honestly, I think he's kind of small for welterweight. So it's yeah. like, for me, like, if he really wants to fight Darren Till, like, because I know they have some type of thing going on, then, I mean, he can do that. I don't think that'd be a smart idea for his career. But, I mean, you know, people make dumb decisions every day. But I, me personally, I go ahead. No, I was just going to say, what, what, like, in the long term, what does that really get him if he beats Darren Till? Nothing. Like, because it, if, wait because him fighting at 170 or fighting at any like him fighting at trying to go up in weight class or anything like that it's going to be okay you beat darren till there's still uh, too many other good fighters that he would have to fight that he's too small he's too small to fight like it, to move up that's that's my only issue when fighters move up in weight class it's like okay i get what you're doing by moving up in weight class because you think this is a better fight like even with connor when he fought um when he fought cowboy like I, I I get that you want to move up in weight to get that fight and try to work fight at 170, but the downside to it is okay. The question becomes what does like even for Connor's situation and I don't want to make it about him, but what do you do next? Do you fight at 170 because you fight an Usman? We know that's a start a starch fest. Yeah. Or do you wait or do you wait at 155? Like <laughs> like let's be real. Like we know he's getting smoked by Usman. Yeah, 100, 100 percent. Exactly. So, like, what, like, what do you do then? So, for Mike Perry, him going up to fight, uh, going up, going up and wait, it just it is a horrible decision. I think. I, I I agree. I think Mike Perry should just fight somebody in the top fifteen at welterweight and just call it a day. I think honestly, I think if he moves up to fight Darren Till, Darren Till will smoke him because I think Darren Till is the better fighter. But with that being said. Dustin Poirier, they were talking about his options of who to fight next. I think it's either he should fight Tony or Connor, and that's Ooh. it. Mm-hmm. Ooh, Every, everybody, I, I mean, there's nobody else for him to fight besides those two or the loser of Gaethje and um, Habib. That's I it. mean, me personally, if I were him, because I know he wants the title shot. And those one of those two fights will get him the title shot. So it's like, I mean, I, he might as well go for it, you know. And I think if Tony wins, then he'll probably end up getting the title shot next. Any well, now if Tony wins, Connor gets the next title shot. If if Dustin wins, then I, you know, honestly, I think no matter what, Dustin might get or Court Connor might get the next title shot anyway because I know he's just waiting in the wings for one of them to lose. Yeah, see. Con- well, Connor, I think it's already been guaranteed that Connor's going to get that next fight with with the winner of um, you talking about the winner of Khabib versus Gaethje, right? Yeah, I think Connor's going to get that next fight, get that fight next. They need to hurry up and Gaethje's fight, man. Came out and said that he wants to fight Connor after. Well, it's because the Ramadan Ramadan is way uh kind of put a roadblock in in the in the Gaethje versus um, Khabib fight. Yeah, it's just that like. After Ramadan's over, they need to get that fight like underway because it's kind of holding up the division. Well, yeah. but here, you, I, go ahead, smash my back. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You good? I was gonna say with well, the Ramadan thing, right? I I respect the the people who practice that religion and of course through with that. But there's another UFC fighter that maybe you guys may know or may not know, but his name is Bilal Muhammad. He also practice ramadan and if i'm not mistaken he just recently fought yes right habib is using that as an excuse i don't i want to say that though because you um at the end of the day you can't I, I can't say he's using it as an excuse because he's always been like that throughout his whole career one and then two on top of it like you everybody's body is different when you when you're doing fasting every day yeah. Like your everybody's body reacts differently to it. So for him, in his case, and it's his religious practice, I have to respect it because even he he's came out and said it takes him a month, it takes him like thirty days, to to be back at that level. And like the fighter that you said, right? Yes. Is he he's not a champion? No, he, he's not a champion. But you know, he's he. I'm just saying. I feel like if he could if he could fight 
a lot sooner than Habib does, you know. And Habib is a lot of people are saying he's pound for pound number one. You know, he's one of the best athletes. But that's why he's pound for pound, though. Yeah, pound for pound because he, you know, he's only fought like two or three credible people, and the other twenty five wins he had was against a bunch of soda cans. Like, let me not get into it because I don't want to. I I know, I know. <laughs> but I, I, look, so. I think that the fight could have happened a little earlier. You know, I, I don't think it could have happened in May or stuff like that, but I, we don't have to wait till September. You know what I mean? But it is, I mean, he's a champ, right? He can make, he can make the calls. It just sucks. Cause the guy, he barely fights now. And I think a lot of people want to see this lightweight division finally move. But that's also, you, I realize it, this year it looks, it looks worse because of the whole COVID-19 situation. Because had had he fought Tony, because the plan was for him to fight Tony and then probably fight in July or August. So that meant he probably would fight two to three times this year because if he could get, depending on who he fought, if he was to fight Tony and then they were to run him back and then he beats Tony again, then he beats Connor, whatever. So he would have had possibly three fights in a year, right? Okay. But you also got to realize because of, the, because of COVID-19, we're stuck in a situation where he has to, we have to wait until like everything is done to this whole situation till people not done but till people figure out how the workaround for it and then secondly you realize that when when you're looking at real when you actually start looking at fighters he fights at a championship level not like the other fight that other fighter that you brought up right i'm not, I'm not even familiar with him yeah. but he's not a champion he's not a elite fighter within within the organization so he can bounce back because he needs it. He needs to fight at the end of the day because he knows he's fighting He's fighting for pennies in comparison to what Khabib is fighting for. Khabib could fight twice a year, make 4 or $5 million, and probably pocket maybe a million or $2 million of that for himself and walk away and knows he lives a simple lifestyle. So I, I, I think with Khabib, it's just more of a thing where he knows, hey, I got to – in order for me to to perform and practice at the level, that elite level that I want to, I have to wait. I have to give myself, my body and my mind enough time to actually be able to do that. So, I mean, I, granted, it sucks, but that's what happens to fighters, though. They all fight. Once you become champion, you only fight two to three times a year. Right. Like, like Connor was fighting five times a year, and then next thing you know, oh, he only fights twice a year. Yeah, I mean – what Connor did was a hundred percent correct. Like the way he moved when he, once he became champion was a great neither. But I I like to look at Usman and and Volkanovski. Right, they both fought in December and they're both fighting again in July. They're already having their second string of title fights less than a year's time than Habib. Then when Habib fought again, and I and I think it's just. A lot of people are just tired of this whole lightweight debacle with, oh, my God, we're getting one title fight every year and a half. They're just waiting. They're waiting for legitimate title fights. Yeah, I think people they're we're waiting. But I think it's I think a lot of times it, a lot of it has I think right now, especially it has to do with the whole circumstances of COVID-19. But I think I, but I think that's also the reason why fighters realize like hey if if i'm champion let me hold off because all that mean all that's a sign for is if i'm champion i hold off i have a chance to say well i'm not putting out anything until later like uh, not later but when i do put out a fight it's going to be a bigger sell well speaking of fighters holding off um chael sonnen had a lot to say about john jones a couple days ago where he was just uh kind of spouting off at the mouth sounded like he was kind of hating on him a little bit like saying that essentially john jones was avoiding the dominic reyes fight now i'm not sure if he's saying that out of like john jones having fear of dominic reyes or saying that he just straight up just doesn't want to fight him uh but, just be talking man yeah no like it, it's uh it was weird it was weird to hear him talk like that because chill usually um you know the way he the way he speaks about people is usually not in that manner I'm I'm not surprised because they've been having that long running beef, right? So ever right. since John beat Chael up, they had like this underlying tension, and I've I I won't forget when I think John 
beat Anthony Smith. They had a post fight interview, and John was telling Ariel, he's like, "Hey, Ariel, I only will take questions from you. I don't want to take it from people who doesn't do good journalism." And Chael was sitting next to Ariel when he said that. Jesus, so basically, you know, sneak this in Chael without saying his name, and um, and Chael was like, "It's rude," and then Chael came out to Ariel and was like, "Yeah, I it was rude. I didn't like that." Not saying he has to apologize or nothing, but it was rude. It and ever since then, Chael's been, you know, <laughs> it feels like almost every day now he's he's throwing shots at John. Yeah. So, and that's and that's just and that's just because he he knows in his space that's the the only way that it help it help it benefits him to some extent because John's in the media right now. Right, John's in the media, and then on top of it, hey, let me the greatest one of if not the greatest arguably the one of the top three greatest fighters of all times in the sport has tension with me so anytime you put his name in a headline it's going to get some traction like i didn't agree with it i didn't really agree with chell what chell was saying he made some points but it's just kind of like okay dude i know you you pull in he's kind of like academics at right now with this yeah it's kind of weird how he just keeps on pulling john's name up i me personally, I'm not really the biggest fan of it. I'm, Chael is a smart guy, and he has a lot to say about the sport. You know, like I, I like hearing his voice and his opinions on things. So I hope he switches it up. Just like we're about to switch it up and go to NASCAR, talk about fucking Bubba <laughs> Wallace and this noose that he found in his fucking garage that they call it a fucking garage pulley, quote unquote. Like like Bubba Wallace says, straight up noose. I don't know how you can confuse the two. Yo, like when I watched, when I looked at the picture of it, I said. That is a noose. And I I, le- I legitimately looked and had to think, how does this, how is this thing not a noose, right? And I'm thinking, why would someone even tie it like that? Do you like, never, work- you've never tied a knot like that to pull something to the side ever? No, not where I'm wrapping this shit all around <laughs> a bunch of times around the rope to for security. Hell no. Like you tie a knot <laughs> and you keep it pushing. I, bro, I've, I've literally worked in like, I can't like at, at a mechanic before to some extent and you have a garage like you pull it with a string yeah i know what a garage pull looks like and it doesn't look like that i'm like it was it was some bs like the fbi i think did even did an investigation and they came out within like two days of doing the investigation and i think they i think they were saying they they, they were unsure if it was a noose at that moment and then they came out and said eventually said oh no it's a noose that's uh, real God. i mean like you know if if he had half a brain you know half a squirrel's brain you you know okay yeah this is the noose there's no investigation needed but i mean it, 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 I, I, it, how can you be like you look at that thing and then you straight up and just be like well you know i, I think that's a garage pull down I, you know, something that thick and something that big, yeah. You know, we can't put a person's neck on that. That's that's used to to pull the garage down. Like, are you serious? You know what I mean? It's just it's bizarre, yeah. man. Yeah. Initially, NASCAR, what they ended up doing was as soon as that happened, because of course this was they they believe is is motivated by that Confederate by the whole situation with the Confederate flag being removed from NASCAR, right? Yeah. So the funny thing is with NASCAR is they actually came out and they actually walked with Bubba Wallace to support him, right? Yeah. And a lot of people are saying, oh, NASCAR, it took less time for NASCAR to walk with Bubba Wallace and stand with him than the NFL standing with Ka- Kaepernick pretty much, right? Yeah, that gives the NFL a bad look, right? Because NASCAR, I'm not hating on NASCAR, but it's not the talk of the town sport. So yeah, Not it- anymore. The, the fact that you have them, R.P. Dale Earnhardt, right, because he's a legend, but the fact that you have them come out in the forefront, and I feel like that's a sport that's their fan audience, their fans or their audience is more Caucasian people than non-Caucasian people. And, I said, and that's just not a knock of, like, the fans I watch or nothing. The fact that they stood, they stood for a black person during that whole scenario before the NFL, which is dominated by black people, it it, it makes the NFL look like you know a joke to some yeah. people at least. Yeah, yeah, like me me and I were talking about this the other day. It's just like when you see other sports and you see like 
the audiences that they cater to not saying that they're only that they only have you know certain cultures and certain races in it but like the, what it's catered to and the people who watch it the audiences that they have you notice that you know it's kind of um it, it it can be a little difficult at times to see them actually you know want to support the cause you know what i mean so for nascar to step out in front even though their their audience is quote unquote the rednecks and only white they still stood up for their black participant in the sport and that's you know a great thing yeah and i mean I, i'll say this because i like i growing up as a kid i used to go to nascar races right well you lived in dover too so i mean you should you should have yeah, but I mean, I went to NASCAR races outside of like Delaware. Honestly, you went to what Kentucky or some shit? Nah, yo, you gotta chill. Nah. <laughs> like, I think I went to the one and because I always wanted to go to the Daytona 500 in Florida. I always that was like one I always wanted to go to as a kid. Um, like, I was a big NASCAR fan. Like, I I know, like, I had a favorite NASCAR driver. Rusty Wallace was my number two. Was Rusty Wallace, um, Jimmy Johnson. Uh, Kyle Bush, uh, a bunch of the motherfuckers, right? Like, in my experience, well, my experience when I went was I learned, like, a lot of people, uh, a lot of the culture that I was accustomed to as a kid coming up, because I would go with me and my uncle would go. It, it was, like, the most hospitable. from In my situation, when I went, it was the most hospitable people I've ever met before. Like, we would go there and granted I grew up poor. So like we, my uncle would be able to get tickets for whether it be like free tickets from his job or whatever. We would go and we would just sit there and enjoy. And we probably wouldn't even buy food cause we probably couldn't afford, we probably didn't have any money to buy food. But the people that we sat next to were like people that were, that were, I guess, quote unquote, like the people with the cut off sleeves and all of that type of stuff and what people stereotype nascar fans to be and they broke bread with us a lot of times like they realized like oh they gave us my uncle something to drink if you want it or give him some food give us gave me gave us food and drinks and stuff like that like now granted dr umar probably would say something differently about that <laughs> but yeah like nascar i think i think for the most part nascar recognizes or from my experience uh growing up as a nascar fan and going to the going to like the games or races, I think for them it's granted it's money, but they also realize like they don't discriminate. It's more for them. It's not it's not a team, right? Like if you're a Bubba Wallace fan, right? You don't say, well, when Bubba Wallace, we only support Bubba Wallace when he's playing at this. When you go to his city, everybody wears a jersey. Well, it's like. No, it's pretty – in that situation, everybody – these are events that they have that you come to support all all the top racers at the end of the day, and they just race every week, damn near. Well, it also, like, because they have that stereotype, their stereotype around their sport where it's like, oh, like, rednecks and white people only watch our sport, it's yeah. important for them to really be behind him because – then it, I feel like if they're not, then it kind of feeds into the stereotype where it's like, oh, well, we don't really care because at the end of the day, our audience doesn't care. You know what I mean? So it's like the fact that they're trying to be inclusive and trying to help out as a whole for everybody, it says a lot, you know? I respect NASCAR for what they did. Yeah, I respect it too. And plus, like, I read an article about it. They said there was like 11, apparently there's like 1,100 pools across like garages across the country, right? Only one of those pools was a noose. Only one of those pools looked like a noose and that was in Bubba Wallace's uh, garage and he's a black driver and they just got rid of the confederate flag they believe that they're trying to say they believe that that pool it couldn't have been there before i think like october of last year but who knows um i think it's probably got put there much more recently but i think i, I salute nascar for saying you know what let's take a step ahead let's be a step ahead of the situation whether it's for PR or whether it's genuine, it's one of the things where you have to at least appreciate, like, hey, I know we're going to offend people, just like with uh, Jeff Bezos, where he had he pretty much had to tell off a customer because the customer didn't like the fact that they had, like, a Black Lives Matter Black Lives Matter banner on um, 
on the page when you came on the Amazon page. I don't know. I think to me, I, I'm, I, I, I salute them for what they did. And I think we should, I think we should just kind of keep, we should just be mindful of those type of organizations at the end of the day. Like, I know you were telling me something about AEW or something like that, right? Yeah, man. Like, you know, that's weird you because. Play it? Say it again? Go. Well, I was going to say, I'll play the clip if you want. Well, ooh, um, yeah, go ahead and play the clip. Well, let me, let me bring it up, bring us in first so we're not, we don't just have that sounding crazy. Okay, well, essentially what happened was is that there was a wrestler in AEW and um, he had made a comment about Sasha Banks and it just really derogatory uh, talking about, well, just, just play it so people can hear. Sasha Banks versus Becky Lynch. Charlotte beat them both up. Bro, Sasha Banks. So, oh, my God. When I, when I was at the WWE the other week, I wanted to just go fucking rape that woman. You had a tryout? What the fuck? Uh, sort of. It was just as an extra thing whenever they came to tech. Yeah, what so that's why oh, it's oh, crazy. What? Oh, Are you about to play it again? I, I'm not even going to play it again because that's just that's too wild. I don't even want to hear that again, but that's wild. Yeah, man. Like, so he, he said oh, that. He just came out just said, I just want to rape. That is crazy, bro. Yeah, you, you can never... That, you can never That's crazy. There's there's no good reason to say that. I don't care if you thought you were joking. I don't care <laughs> what you don't joke around like that. Like it's that's wild, bro, man. Bro, how do you fix your lips to even say something like that? Like now I see why you didn't want me to listen to this show until we got here. Yeah, because I wanted you to I wanted to get your reaction, but it's like at the same point in time, like yeah. it's just it's just bad, man. Like it's that's really bad. So the wrestler in in man, the wrestler uh-huh. in question um, has been suspended, and um, apparently him and Sasha Banks had a discussion as to what 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 was said and you know how she felt about it and said that you know it's not a joking matter and you shouldn't say things like that, especially when you're being recorded for the public to hear you. You shouldn't say things like that. Yo, fam, how does someone feel comfortable just something like that out loud? Like, even, like, I feel like, I don't know, that's just like one of them terms where, like, when you hear, I feel like when you say the word rape, right, that should just be a word that in any human's mind, the word rape should just be a word that you should know not to say, no matter what. Like, it, like there's nothing, I've never heard someone ever use the term rape and mean it in a positive context. Like that that's just not one of those words that you ever say with any positive context to it at the end of the day. So Yeah. Fan, what was he thinking? Uh I I don't know what the what he was thinking. But what I do know is that he got suspended indefinitely without any pay. And the president of the company said that they're donating his pay to <laughs> women programs or activist groups or whatever that that help support women that are victims of a of that situation that has been a victim of those situations and uh, <clears throat> it's crazy in the wrestling world right now because there's this thing coming up where it's a hashtag called speaking out where there's female wrestlers coming out and saying like yeah this wrestler and that wrestler has been sexually assaulting me or harassing me oh wow really? yeah yep so now you have all these female wrestlers that weren't victims coming out to support them and make and you know help bring awareness some of the men are doing it as well where they're coming out supporting them and some wrestling companies have been letting go some of the talent including the notorious infamous wwe and i think it's it's no surprise that this happens in pro wrestling i think the surprise is what took pro wrestling so long for this to happen because shit like this happens across all sports i wouldn't be surprised if mma and boxing had shit like this going on and they oh, absolutely and they just haven't had their shit happen i think people like that who sexually assault and sexually harass women i don't think there should be any sympathy or any light punishments for people like that that's not it's not right and I think that 
if you're you're a person like that, you're entitled to all the backlash and all the heat that comes from it. You know, because you did a real malicious and even criminal criminal thing. And I I support the women that are speaking out and I believe that they should continue to speak out against people who are doing malicious things to them. But it's bringing up a little bit of debate because some people are like, oh, well, why are these women? Some women are just coming out, but like, oh, yeah, I know him, too. and He did this to me. And there and some people are saying like, oh, well, that's that's not fair because there's no evidence. What happened to innocent being innocent before proven guilty? I wish I had the Dr. Umar drop for that. But with situations like this, it's kind of weird because like. You know, I, think I wasn't done. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Law. And I was just going to say real quick. I don't think it's fair for this situation, right? Because a lot of women who are affected by shit like that, they may not be ready to come out like that because mentally it fucks them up, you know? Right. So it's not fair to do that. Maybe that woman was ready at that moment in time to be like, hey, look, this is what really happened. I got the strength to say it now. So. For somebody to be like, oh, they're just saying it to say it, that's fucked up. And I don't agree with that at all. So, well, and, and, you know, it's it's messed up in situations like this because, like, you know, whenever whenever accusations come out about somebody, you know, there there is the potential for people to say, like, hey, this guy did something when something didn't happen. Me personally, I feel like I, I'm not appreciative of women that does that because I feel like it discredits the women who actually have went through things. They, to me personally, I, I don't, I think that is a disgusting thing to do, but it's also not for me to say, Hey, that didn't happen to you either. I feel like if you feel like, if you feel like something happened, go through due process, figure it out, you know? But like, I feel like if, you know, if you, if you have something to say, if some, if you feel like something happened to you, by all means, you have the right to say it, you know, but I, I feel like if something didn't happen to you and you're saying it just to either try to try to make money off of a person or to, to you know essentially be included in the situation when that didn't happen to you i feel like that's disgusting honestly yeah it's it is disgusting like i i i share the sentiments a lot of the same sentiments that you got already said so i don't really have to repeat them so but yeah it is overall it is disgusting though like speaking of like shutting doors on people right apparently like myself I don't know if y'all saw, but they've actually closed all of the like eighty two stores. Yep, I I seen that, and then it it sucks for the people who actually work there full time. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think it really sucks for them. They're they're now they're out of a job, and that during these times, that's that's really hard to hear. You know, like your company is closing down your job. That's that's. That sucks. More yeah, but I think yeah. there's a reason why Microsoft is doing it. Kind of like some people are speculating because of oh they're doing it to make sure they have money on the back end for the the X the new Xbox that's coming out this year or whatever. But I think it's something a little deeper than that though. Oh, what's the what's the cozy conspiracy? No, no, it's no conspiracy. I just think it's like a, a economic thing, like a business thing that they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, like from a business standpoint, I think it from just a business standpoint, it makes the most sense. When I saw it, I wasn't surprised. I think it was more confirmation. Um because I think a lot of people a lot of people probably realize this or if they don't, they they actively participate in this uh where you don't most people shop online nowadays. Like to go into a store it it, it, it it's hard for me to want to go into a store to buy something when I could just order it online from the comforts of my home or wherever I'm at. Yeah. And I don't have to go, go to the store, search for it, all that, all the extra stuff. So I think for them, they probably realized like, Hey, they probably were losing sales anyway from the brick and mortar businesses and just realized like, yo, you know, we're still up. Our sales are good. And they probably recognize like the, they probably had, I, I'm not sure what their quarter, their quarterly earnings were. But I'm sure their earnings report was probably pretty good to the point where they were like, yo, yo, listen, we can we can do this and we can do this financially. We can do this and just be a digital company. So now everything is for them. Everything now is going to be more of a work from home thing. It's unfortunate that those people that worked for them 
are um, uh, from those stores are now without a job. But I think it also, I'm, I'm sure some of those people will be able to leverage a lot of the skill sets that they've acquired from them and actually probably see if they can, if, if, if they'll be able to put themselves into the digital workspace for Microsoft, because they, they would probably just be like help desk people to some extent. I think, um, you know, it's just one of the process. It's just the process of what's going on with COVID-19. Like people, I think these companies, I think this is just the first of a few companies that are just going to start closing down like stores across the board because they're going to feel like, hey, we can do this and we can do it for the for the cheap and just get the shit directly to you. And it probably costs us less money than, you know, actually having this active store open in the mall or on the side of the road where you have to actually go in and possibly sell like maybe like, let's just say maybe uh, like five thousand dollars worth of merchandise and they're selling that out, out of their warehouses like quickly, you know, like it probably costs them a lot less money to actually do that. And for me personally, I, I understand it. I hope that with some of those help desk people, you know, gaining that experience. They'll be able to get jobs. I'm not sure if y'all heard that um, Donald Trump, I guess, signed an executive order that's supposed to be helping people get jobs based off of their experience and less off of their degrees now. Yeah, it, um, it, which is kind of, which is great. Don't get me wrong. I think it's great. It's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy, like, the world we're living in now where everything is kind of, like, going backwards, literally. like It's literally like a Twilight Zone to some extent where we're going where we're at the point where people are actually saying hey listen let's let's go let let's focus less on accomplishments and more on skill sets so i think it i think it's going to open up i think it's going to open up the open up the way for a lot of people plus on top of it you see where where you have people now like like the internet has made a, a lot of thing a lot of people equivalent right to some to some degree like you have a kid that's 14 years old, 15 years old. like, And we grew up hearing about stuff like this, I think, where I remember I would grow up hearing about like the kid that hacked into the FBI or hacked into Microsoft and all of that type of shit. Then, and what was given to them was an option of either you could work for Microsoft or you can go to jail for five or 10 years. And a lot of those kids decided to take the job working at Microsoft because technically, from a technological standpoint, they were, their skill sets were so far advanced than the company. If you hack into a company, that's just common knowledge. If you are able, if you have the skill sets to hack into a major company, you probably are more of an asset to them than a liability if they can acquire you as a as someone to work for them. At the end of the day, I agree. That's just that's just the reality of it all. And I think the him signing that exec, executive order, I think. It's gonna it's gonna put a lot of things in. It's gonna it's gonna shake a lot of things up because colleges is now you'll have. I think we're I think we're gonna lean more into people taking into trades again. Um, people start taking trades again. People vocational schools will be more prominent because now I don't really need a degree. I just need a skill set and creating. And I and I'm granted I don't want to make it. I'm. I, you guys know where I sit in terms of supporting certain politicians, but I think in a sense, it's going to make America um, have a chance, have a chance. I think it's going to give Americans a chance that may not come from same opportunities as other people that have, that were able, people that were able to take advantage of certain opportunities, whether it be jobs or whatever, because the reality is, well, not jobs, but even colleges or something like that. Like the reality is when you go work at a job, a lot of it, a, a college to me, what someone once told me was, and with college and I agree to it, all it, it, all it really shows is that you, that I can do something, right? I can do something and I can finish it. You can teach me something and I can learn it to the best of my ability that I can pass a class for it. So pretty much teach me a skill set teach me how to fish and i'll eat for the rest of my life and if i learn that skill i can go take that fishing skill anywhere without saying i got i'm a licensed fisherman pretty much so yeah i think the executive order it was a solid it's a solid thing 
And I just want to give an example of one of my classes. That I'm, so for anybody that doesn't know, I'm in college for a computer network security. And one of my professors told me straight up, he was like, I'm going to let you guys know this. If you graduate and get this bachelor's degree, you're not necessarily going to land a high paying job just off the degree alone. Right. You're not even going to land a high paying job off the master's degree alone. You're going to have to go out and get your skill set and prove to these employers that you're looking for employment with that you could do the job. And, and for the career field that I'm in, you don't necessarily need a degree for that. And my, this is my professor telling me this shit. So, and I'm going to college to learn. So with this, it kind of cuts out a lot of, a lot of bullshit. Kind of like you know, you got to be, you have to have a degree to be a, re- a manager at a retail store. It's going to cut that shit completely out. And I think that it's going to make a lot of schools. It might, it might hurt the schools in a way. But I think you're going to see a lot more people going to schools for certain shit and not for no bullshit degree just to say, oh, I have a degree so I could get a job. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I, I can say from my career field, like in my career field, there's two things you need in order to uh, actually be able to get a job as far as requirements go. And one of those things are passing and getting the certificate. Right. So but that certificate doesn't necessarily say that you're good at the job. I saw somebody at my job who apparently was very good at passing tests, but I didn't know how to copy and paste things on her computer. And Uh that's like, yeah, it was crazy. Like, uh, like she, she knew nothing and it was obvious that she didn't know anything. And when we tried to make her learn things, she didn't want to learn. She always, we always be like Lisa going answer the phones. She'd be like, oh, I lost my voice. <laughs> then we tell a joke. She'd be like, oh, ha, 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 ha. We'll be like, all right, go and answer the phone. Oh, my voice hurts so much. I'm like, all right, bitch. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Whatever. You're not talking about, you're not talking about Miley, sorry. No. What? Does she work with me? Like. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm out. I'm fucking out. No, uh, it's, it's crazy, man. Like, it, I'm, I'm, I'm all for it, honestly, because, like, at the end of the day, I want people who know how to do their job you know right yeah and that's the and that's the reality of it all like even i always go back to this to this thing that 50 cent once said right he was like yeah he was like he was like to him college is a waste right and his reasoning was and it's the truth because i've seen it by, i've had classmates like that before you only people are only there to learn enough to pass the class once they pass the class, they've dished out the information. They no longer, res- they never keep, they don't keep a, a reserve of it, right? And he was like, I don't want to hire people that's like, I'd rather hire the person, like the person that ends up creating the company is the guy that learn that knows everything there is to know about what, whatever he does, he or she does, right? And because of that, that's what, because of they acquire those skill sets of understanding the skill and knowledge and willing to learn, they hire the person that graduated from college. But the guy that graduates from college sometimes isn't necessarily like all that like informative of stuff that they do. Like I've met people, I've had classes with people where they literally say like, yo, I'm just barely trying to pass and I don't know nothing that's going on in this class, but they have a C or a B. And it's like, Oh, like that, that's cool now. But when you get into the real world and you're trying to do something within there in that field, you're going to have a hard time. Cause even, even when it comes to when you have to relearn something, you don't know what you're learning. You don't even know what you're relearning at the end of the day. So a lot of it is, is perishable knowledge, right? Exactly. I feel like if you're the certain shit that is really important that you must go to school for, like number, Number one, being a doctor. You know, no, you don't. Yeah. You, uh, <laughs> no, you, you don't. Uh, you just, no, you don't. You just don't. The, no, no, no. Don't you remember the one dude, the kid that was a doctor? Dr. Love, you're right. Yeah. Yo, Dr. Love was a doctor, and he was actually in there, uh, you know, consulting and shit. Yeah, that legally got in trouble, and he got locked up for doing other things as well. Look, the he system, was a doctor. Man. 
He was a he was a doctor. Doctor Sebi's a doctor. Would would you go would you go to uh Doctor Love? Listen, man, if I have relationship problems, why would you not go to a person with the last name Love? Boom. Uh, oh, hey. You're right. Hey, I guess you're right, man. I guess you're right. Uh I, how can I argue with something like that? He's an actual doctor, man. You can't deny it. If you yeah. walk into his doctor doctor's office, what do they call him? They don't call him Mr. Love, they call him Doctor Love. You're right. Dr. Dre's an actual doctor too. Hey, they call yeah. him Dr. Dre. He's, He's a, a doctor, doctor of some type. Yeah, see, yeah. there you go. Operates so on beats. So yeah, so is Dr. Disrespect. He's an actual doctor as well. So. Hey, I mean we're not gonna get into Dr. that. Dr. Oh. Umar. Okay. There, no, Doctor Ubar. I, I, be, I think it's believable. He's a doctor. He, the man got real life degrees. Allegedly. So y'all ready to wrap this up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's uh, <laughs> let's let's wrap this joint up for the day, because you know if we start talking about Umar, we're gonna have to really dive deep into into the into some thoughts shouts out to dr umar man like if he ever catches one of this we don't hate him like we uh you live up the street from him yeah i mean i mean we could probably go and daff him up for real he probably would hate us but i mean well he might hate me and lyle but yeah i was gonna say he's gonna hate me and nigel but spence you you're in the clear oh yeah you know you know you know i'm saying i do what i can he might actually fool with you lyle i don't know about nigel look man i I, I date yeah, all I types of races. It, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, I don't I don't discriminate. It is what it is, man. Look, if, if that's a problem, then it is what it is. But I I am proud of who I am, you know. But shout out to Doctor Umar be. anyway. As you should be. As you should be. Uh, with that being said, you, you guys, <laughs> you've been highly advised. <laughs> you have been highly advised. Boom! Boom! Bang! 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 Bang!